One of the simplest kinds of graphs we can consider is a connected graph. And uh, just a reminder, a connected graph is one in which for every pair of nodes, there is a connection, there's a path to get from one to the other. And the reason why connected graphs are handy is because usually, for many graph problems, if we want to prove something, we assume the uh, graph is connected and we run our algorithm on it. And if it isn't, we can say, well, we'll run our algorithm on every connected component. The connected components of a graph being the connected pieces of a graph, it's, it's actually just connected. So it's a good thing to understand connected graphs in in uh, uh, in many ways because they're, they have interesting structure to them. And so let's first write down the thing we know about a connected graph. In fact, we know exactly one thing about them. So let's write down the first thing. So the first thing we know about connected graphs is that for all pairs of vertices A and B, there's a path between A and B. So that's good. We know this one thing about a connected graph. And here's actually an interesting thing we can say about a connected graph. Speci uh, what we can say is that if we have a connected graph and we add an edge to it, an edge between two nodes that weren't didn't have an edge between them before, then we'll get a cycle going through those vertices. So that's kind of an interesting thing to say. So let's write that down. So this is kind of interesting, right? We didn't really know anything about our graph except that it was connected. But now suddenly we add one edge and we get a cycle. How can that be? And so if we had to think about how to prove the statement, it's a, it's a typical propositional statement, but it's about a graph. And so as usual, we need to marshal all the things we do know about a graph. Well, we really know only two things about our graph. One, it's connected. And two, there was no edge between A and B to begin with. So if we had to kind of mentally draw our graph, it might look something like this. Here's A. And it's connected to a bunch of stuff. We'll call this the gigantic hairball. We have no idea what's inside it. But there's a bunch of nodes and, and edges and something's going on there. And somewhere on the other side, you know, again, it's popping out. We just pull out B. Maybe B looks like this. It's got a bunch of things coming out of it. And this is a connected graph. In this hairball, everything's connected, and A and B are connected. But there is no edge between A and B. And now, what happens when we add this new edge between A and B? Well, we add a new edge, like that. And now it's kind of clear what's happening. There was originally some kind of path between A and B, and maybe, I don't know, it went something like this. It went through, it did some stuff, and it came out there. And now we have this new edge. Of course, we're going to get a cycle. And so, formally, what we can say is that because of one, there exists some part from A to B in G. And so let's say the path looks like A to V0 to V1 up to VK and then V. And now we add the edge A comma B. So now we get the new path that looks something like A, V0, V1, all the way up to B, and then A. And that's a proof that we got a cycle. So this is an example of the kind of direct proofs you can get from working with graphs. If you have an if statement and you want to prove a then statement, you can do it directly like this. There are other ways of proving things in graphs, and we'll see some of them later. But the interesting thing about this property, that if I add an edge to a connected graph, I get a cycle is that the converse actually holds true as well. And the converse looks something like this. So if we take a connected graph that has a cycle, and we remove one edge from the cycle, it stays connected. And I'm not going to prove this. Actually, there's a proof of this in the book, and you can think about it yourself. It's the converse of the previous statement. Because what we said was if we have a connected graph and we add an edge to it, then uh, you get a cycle. Here I'm saying if I take a cycle and remove an edge from it, I, it stays connected. And this 
property is actually quite interesting. And I, I do recommend that you think about how to prove this yourself using a similar method as the previous case before you go look at the book. But what's interesting about this is that it tells us how to get a smaller connected graph from an actual connected graph. So for example, suppose I have a connected graph. Okay, so let's draw a connected graph. So let's see. We have this, we have this. And we'll connect them all up. Okay. So this graph is connected. There's a path from everywhere to everywhere else. And now we say, okay, there's a cycle in here. Let's say the first cycle we see is this one. Like that, on these four nodes. Now that I have a cycle, I can remove an edge from it. So let's make another copy of the graph. And now I'll remove an edge. This graph is still connected. It's got one fewer edge, but it's still connected. And I can do the same thing. I can do this all over again. I can select another uh, cycle. Let's say this one. And I can remove one of the edges from it. And I still stay uh, connected. And here's the cool thing. I can keep doing this till there are no more cycles left. In this case, I'll end up with I deleted this last edge from this cycle. In other words, the smallest connected graph from a given set of nodes is one that has no cycles. And such a graph is called a tree.